Hello, my brother. How are you? Mr. Val, it's always nice to see you. It's very good to see you, my brother. And I appreciate how you can come on. I know it's extremely late in Doha right now. It's really meant the world to me. I want you to know that. Uh, I appreciate uh, how you came out uh, with such a short notice. I think we talked to you just a few days ago and uh, without thinking about it, you were in. So I appreciate you coming in to share with us how you guys are handling it, how Qatar is responding to it, and uh, how the overseas management of Qatar's company's assets is actually being monitored right now with the situation. Thank you very much, Mr. Val. Ladies and gentlemen, peace be, uh, be upon you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Val, for making this possible. Uh, and I think the COVID, if it showed us something, it showed us that today we live in a borderless uh, world where it's all a one shuttle that we live in and we definitely should be participating and collaborating together. So thank you, Mr. Val, for this opportunity to see all our friends and uh, partners virtually. You know, Qatar is amongst the uh, leading countries in the uh, healthcare and investments. And we have taken a, a strategy in the COVID with all the models that we have been seeing uh, in, in different locations that uh, we used advanced technology to start testing and tracing early stages of the COVID. So because we wanted to break the chain from the transmission and this can be seen by the high spike in the cases versus the population here in Doha. But uh, the government, I think, has been acting in, in, in a very professional manner. We had the capability and we have just uh, finalized from building uh, 12,000 beds in only 72 hours. And in addition to already five hospitals that been ha have been dedicated to the COVID, on, a, on top of the five-star hotels where they have been repurposed because you know now with the hospitality sector being at a halt, uh, now it was uh, very wise to start repurposing some of the hospitality portfolio uh, in the country and turning it into uh, a quarantine and for uh, COVID patients. As well on the private sector, Asdan Holding and Qatar Parma has also initiated their own uh, PPE uh, and sanitizers manufacturing which which is now the country is self sufficient and self reliant and whereas Dan holding now are producing 10000 ventilator a month which keeps us i think at a bit, very uh, good position for the covid we were not of course like uh, korea korea have been i think outsmarted the covid but definitely we're learning and we're developing day by day and we're making sure that uh, we're not only getting bypassing this situation, but we're also uh, creating the tools that we will be using for the next pandemic and testing all our might and capabilities to see, are we really proof? And I think what the COVID really showed us is that we are very significant to what we came to acknowledge or know with current technology. Apart from being self-sufficient, this actually positioned Qatar in a very nice stand where we were able to help other countries including China, Iran, Italy, Spain, USA, Lebanon, Tunisia, Algeria, Rwanda, and Nepal, and which extended also to refugees in, uh, in Lebanon, Syria, and Jordanian camps. And as you know, Qatar is now very close to the 2020 World Cup, where, you know, a lot of misfortune happened with uh, Japan right now, and they're even studying to uh, postpone a lot of the sport events where we suffered and aspire as well because you know we host we were hosting a lot of european uh, games here in doha and we were hosting a lot of uh, athletes in doha but because of the current circumstance everything was pushed behind but for facility development and for the stadium that will be dedicated to the 2022 they are still uh, continuing in a very nice pace especially with implementing the best health practices where they are practicing social distancing and whatnot to prevent the workers and to have a very uh, uh, safe environment. And, you know, as a government, as a whole, as a country, we're still very functional. For the economy, as a local market, the government has injected as well 75 billion incentives in the private sectors and more than 10 billion in the Qatari stock market and 3 billion to uh, sustain employees, salaries and businesses rent in, uh, in the SME sector through Qatar Development Bank, which is doing, honestly, a brilliant job 
supporting the SME sector, as in differentiating their product, how they can be on, on different channels to uh, reach some consumers, some PPP uh, stimulants packs as well to sustain them for the coming six months. And especially that now with the central bank providing liquidity for the banks to, sur- to survive, actually a lot of the banks has been uh, postponing their installment for six months given that the Qatari bank is providing additional liquidity. And in regards of our uh, international uh, interaction with the marketplaces internationally, you know, c- companies uh, and family offices like us, QIA, uh, Aspire, Qatar Hospitality, with a collective uh, more than 500 billion uh, AUM, have, as QIA yesterday announced, our appetite is still, is still the same. We think that it will be an excellent time to actually be supporting and collaborating with a lot of companies that will be running out of a cash runway, especially given the current circumstance. Not everyone will be able to actually uh, move progress or even sustain on what hand uh, w- what's happening now. Because what we're seeing in the news, w- w- we think that the marketplace is going to have an L-shaped kind of turn, not a U or a V-shape like what we're seeing on the news and what governments are promoting for. And especially given the latest injections in the marketplace, we definitely think that a lot of opportunities will be present very soon. But I think that our appetite is still the same. You know, everyone is handling uh, their own job. I think we will not get out of this on one piece, but definitely we will get out of it. I think that we should definitely be pushing forward. And, and this is not the end. I think it's the beginning. And there is a new uh, order that will come and take in place, a new system that will come and take place. And for that, until this comes and this model has been created, definitely we should be very sharp, very awake and participate in this marketplace. The market needs you. You have to be participating, staying at home. Uh, This is bad for everyone. Uh, I think you can work virtually. Now we're talking here virtually. Mr. Val, me and him, we talk all the day. Uh, We have meetings all day long, 24-7. We're working throughout weekends, throughout holidays. And definitely you can figure a way, a way to move and be moving around. But I would say that we're open for business. Thank you very much, Mr. Val, for this opportunity. And thank you very much for the people that spoke today. And I wish you all to be blessed and uh, successful. Push through this. And I, I don't think it's time to be waiting. It's time to be moving. God bless. Wow, Ibrahim. I'm so impressed and uh, I'm so thankful. Thank you so much for uh, sharing with us uh, how things are happening in Doha and uh, bringing us this uh, hope and this dynamism of yours, which I think is really needed. Uh, I really miss the idea that I can just give you a call and we can meet in New York or we can meet in Doha. It can't happen, like even if we wanted to, uh, which is unbelievable. But I don't think, as you said, that we should just bow down and uh, cross our fingers. I think we should do something about it. And um, I really appreciate it. Thank you, sir.